Ray. What? What's the deal with this new distribution framework called Ray? I thought Apache Spark is the king of big data processing. Well, still Spark is a great distribution framework for big data processing, but Ray takes another approach in distributed computation. Then which one I should choose? Ray or Apache Spark? Well, Spark is mainly for data oriented heavy workloads or when you have big data processing, but Ray is focusing on task heavy workload. So distributing your tasks rather than distributing mm. your data or task parallelism versus data parallelism. So if I want to have both type of distributed computing on task parallelism and data parallelism, mm. then I should use Ray on Apache Spark or Databricks, right? Yes. Do you want to give it a try now? Yeah, sure. Then let's go. Hello everyone, this is MG and as always, I'm highly hoping that you are doing great. In this video, we're going to talk about how we can enable Ray an Apache Spark cluster in Databricks. Then what is Ray? Well, Ray is an open source distributed framework that will let you have distributed computing for some specific scenarios that Spark cannot handle them. For example, very specific custom machine learning algorithms or simulation codes or any python code that you couldn't natively distribute them using spark and your code used to run them just over the driver node of your spark cluster but now with ray which focus on task distribution it can be added to even distribute those specific scenarios that spark doesn't support them so ray is great for building distributed applications that requires low latency and high throughput. For example, imagine real-time applications that do fraud detection or recommend their system that they certainly need low latency in a distributed manner. And at the same time now we have a Spark which is great for big data distributed processing and data parallelism processing. And if we can combine these two Spark and Ray compute capabilities for distributed systems now we can have the best of the best come together to get us the finalized solution so let's check it out before we start make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video thank you now let's dig into using ray on databricks as you can see today the time that i'm recording a video almost three days ago it got announced that Ray on Databricks from since February 24th got in public preview. So first of all, let's talk about what is Ray and what's going to be the benefits of using Ray on an Apache Spark cluster in Databricks and sort of under what potential circumstances it's worth to give it a try. And then we're going to provide you walk through that, how you can enable it as of now with this new announcement in your Databricks environment. OK, so uh, for starting a little bit of explanation about Ray compared to Apache Spark, here's actually another nice article that has been published by, again, Databricks. And by the way, this got published almost two three years ago but this is actually before this announcement so you had to do some work around before to enable ray on databricks but now with this preview announcement that i just going to provide you walk through you will see that how easy it is to enable ray on your apache spark cluster but long story short let's just start talking about spark and then we will dig into ray so as we know spark is a great distribution framework specifically for data heavy workload because this is great for distributing your your big data processing let's say you have huge amount of data that you would like to do machine learning model training so you have to do some pre-processing on those huge amount of data so that worth to have some data parallelism in place that can run a specific code a specific function udf user defined function or any let's say pyspark code to run your 
distributed data that you have in multiple partitions, right? So somehow you have just one function, which is the same task, task zero, but the same task can run on multiple partitions. So these nodes can talk to each other if these partitions are in different nodes. There is inner node connectivity for sure. But in general, this is the high level context of how Apache Spark is mainly focusing on data parallelism for distributed workload. Now, when it comes to Ray, sometimes you are not dealing with big data. Even your data is not huge, but your task is heavy. Let me give you an example. You want to do reinforcement learning, and if you're familiar with reinforcement learning as a type of machine learning, you will have an agent and a simulated environment. That agent will roam around that environment to learn, do some trial and test, exploration, exploitation stuff, and then you have the parameters updated so the agent has learned through navigating to that simulation environment. So maybe the data is not huge, but the amount of the time that you have to test your agent in that simulation is a lot. It's a heavy task from iteration, iterative task perspective, and you certainly need to figure out how you can distribute it, right? That's how actually how uh, task parallelism come to the picture here, as you can see. You have multiple nodes and each node can do a separate task or multiple nodes can do one task so you have the full flexibility of distributing your task similar to what traditional HPC or C++ Python workloads instead of C++ and HPC libraries used to do but now with Ray you have more flexibility and of course it's Python um, friendly environment so now the question is how can I implement both together? So having Ray sort of implemented on Apache Spark cluster. Why are you going to do this? Again, we talked about the, the main potential differences. Also, at some points, again, you might to do some distributed processing, not because of heavy data, because of heavy workload in aspect of tasks and complexity of your tasks that I mentioned reinforcement learning as an example. And I think one of the initial intention of inventing Ray was reinforcement learning at a package called RLIP. Uh, the other great benefit of Ray is that it is it can be asynchronized while a Spark is mostly synchronous. Uh, asynchronous. What does that mean? In Spark, in your Databricks cluster, you have your notebook, you sequentially sort of you run your cells, but when you have Ray, you can define multiple different type of task and each task let's say task a and b can run on a different nodes on all on multiple combination of nodes regardless of what is task b is doing and where task b is running so these two tasks can run separately asynchronously regardless of what they are doing so you define your task and, and pass it to your ray actor and it will execute it for you this can be sort of again another great benefit that you can get compared to Apache Spark. Okay, so long story short, Spark for data processing and transformation, but Ray mainly for distributed asynchronous algorithms and task workloads. So now coming to my Databricks, and I will add the, the link of the code that I actually grabbed so you can run it in your own environment. You can see I already have a Databricks cluster I created and running. And by the way, for using this preview feature, uh, you have to uh, in a, have Databricks runtime 12 and above, which I have it here. Then you need to pip install Ray. I already did this. And then here, just simply import Ray Util Spark. And then with these utilities you're importing, you can specify your Ray cluster. Here, I'm going to say I want to have two worker nodes and in on each node i will have eight cpus of course these are based on the clusters i created and a path to collect the logs related to my ray cluster by the way as of now that i'm recording this video the auto scale mechanism for ray cluster is not enabled so whatever you specify here we're going to be fixed so there's no auto scaling like we have in the spark cluster again as of now that i'm recording for ray cluster so I already ran this just a couple of minutes ago before I record this video and it gave me a link that I can open up my Ray dashboard which is very similar like a Spark dashboard you can you have that you can check out your logs jobs stuff let me show you actually when I clicked on the link this is what happened this is the overview you can see that I have a job running if I go to the jobs this is the job that I'm running cluster actors 
some specific metrics if I have I just created actually that's why I don't have that much of logs stuff so if you're filming your with Ray this is the same environment for you now moving on I want to initiate Ray so I just say Ray dot init and I ran it two times that's why the second time it gave me the error so the first one worked properly you don't have this error and then after that I have initiated Ray cluster then I can run any Ray application here is a simple application that you we're gonna submit this remotely to a Ray cluster which is a function that do a, a, a pretty simple calculation of returning some random variables and doing some multiplication stuff and returning the value back again this is just a uh, simple the dummy function regardless of what it is that's like simulating how a function can be go over actor in ray to get executed in a distributed man and then that's it i i ran this code with the given sample count to run this function time ta times to this value that i'm specifying here and then i saw that the new task get started in my ray cluster dashboard and that's it if you want to shut down ray cluster you can just here pause ray shut down so I execute shut down ray cluster and that's it now my cluster is shut down so there are a couple of specific limitations with ray cluster as of now one of them is that as i mentioned ray cluster auto scaling is not supported yet so the fixed numbers that you start the ray cluster are gonna be there the multi-user shared databricks clusters are not supported for the ray cluster that you enable here and if you want on a specific scenarios you want to overwrite the configuration from the ray util spark the, the one that we imported and we set up our ray cluster that might cause the ray cluster to become unstable and even crush because you're rewriting the configuration that you specify to, for that ray right for example you might use some specific ray packages in the documentation xgboost ray was an example that mentioned there that will change some of those configurations right and for example the cpus per, per actor stuff that you want to change and if that have conflict with what you specified at the beginning for ray configuration that might crash your ray cluster so be cautious on do not override this configuration when you have a specified on the top and you can then start uh, utilizing the Ray on distributing a specific machine learning packages that they just come with Ray and they do not come with the Spark or some specific Python function or, or any specific Python code that you couldn't previously run and distribute them over a Spark and you will you used to see them they just run over driver node of Apache Spark cluster. Now with Ray you have low level flexibility of distributing any type of Python code with the task parallelism concept that I just talked about. That was a very brief just introduction about this new feature and sort of create a more uh, awareness about what is going on with Databricks. Certainly check out the documentations and there are much more stuff that can cover beyond just the time of the T video that we recorded. Hope you enjoyed the video and that's it. If you want to escape emptiness in your life, follow on values that bring people together and help them. Then you will find a new meaning in your life. Dream big, my friends. Believe in yourself and take action.